Well, hello, sixth period. Hope you're doing well today. I'm um, sorry I'm not able to do it with you, uh, but uh, I will walk through uh, this gratitude uh, lecture to sort of make sure you stay on pace with all the stuff that needs to get done. All right, uh, before we get started, if you would, let's take like 30 seconds for you to think about what gratitude means to you individually. So I'll, I'll check the time here. Let's take about 30 seconds. Think about what gratitude means to you. How does 20 seconds feel like forever? Okay. Well, uh, hopefully uh, you've had a chance to sort of think about what the feeling of gratitude uh, entails. Now, <clears throat> we do try to come up with um, sort of standard understanding or uh, agreed upon understanding of concepts. So moving ahead, when we want to try and define gratitude, it's a feeling that you have when you've had something good happen in your life. Okay. So good things are happening. You feel thankful for it, grateful for it, whatever the case may be. And another feature of this is that you appreciate the fact that this has happened to you and you realize that it's not because of you. Someone has done something for you or circumstances uh, are such that you've received some sort of benefit or some sort of good in your life. And uh, again, you're like the beneficiary of that. So um, again, someone did a kind act for you and you feel grateful because it wasn't because of you, it was because of someone else or some force outside yourself. Now, one thing that I think is really cool about um, gratitude is that uh, it can be seen in different states. Uh, there's emotion, mood, and then affective state. Um, emotions are sort of based on thoughts and feelings. So we have sensations. We take in sensory information all the time, right? And then with that sensory information, we generate thoughts. And then those thoughts can trigger uh, emotions. So we have these feelings or these emotions. But, eh, you know... What we sense can change, what we think can change. And then so because of that, our emotions can change pretty readily as well. So emotions are these feelings that we have that are sort of transient. They don't last very long. Let's compare that with mood. Um, mood is a feeling that you have for a little bit longer stretch of time. So you might be in a bad mood uh, for one afternoon. Uh, or you wake up and it's a beautiful Saturday morning and you're in a good mood all morning. So emotions are these feelings that we have that are just up and down and change as our thoughts and sensations change. Mood can stretch out over a longer period of time, maybe a day or two. But then affective state is something that we experience over the course of days, weeks, and months. So I don't know if you've ever met someone that's like always chipper, uh, but that would be sort of an affective state. The cool thing about uh, gratitude is gratitude can affect all three of those states of being. We can have grateful emotions, and then we can use uh, gratitude as a tool to help uh, moderate or uh, boost our affective state. Um, a lot of research has gone into gratitude in recent years, and one thing that people are finding is that gratitude practices actually can help elevate affective state or, or people's general mood overall. So this is a really powerful tool for your uh, well-being. Uh, now, how do you measure gratitude? Uh, there are different ways of doing that. And um, one thing that you can do is this gratitude adjectives checklist or GAC. Uh, if you have um, your canvas open, what I invite you to do is pause here and complete the gratitude adjective checklist. Um, I will have uh, uh, an announcement in Canvas that has materials for today, and that will include a link to the gratitude adjectives checklist. It's just three questions, simple math, you add it up. 
Uh, but what, I, what I'd like you to do when you look at this is think about, okay, what is this asking about? When you look at the wording, is it asking about emotion, mood, or affective state? Again, emotion is changing all time. Mood, maybe half day a day. And then effect, affective state is weeks, months. So um, this is a Likert scale. So it's got uh, a range of potential answers. And um, there are delineations or demarcations that say, you know, here's one point in the scale, here's another point in the scale. So I'm sure you've tried a Likert scale, sort of like what we see uh, in this image here with the smiley faces. You may have clicked on stuff with that before to try and indicate where you're at. But again, it's a range of possibilities with sort of designated points of uh, selection. So um, again, please go to, you can pause the video here, go to Canvas Announcements and give it a try. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to try that, and now you're back. Uh, so it's always good to look at the benefits of uh, these happiness practices. And gratitude, like I said earlier, has been a big area of research in recent years. I think there's a lot of money going into gratitude research. And again, it's f being found to have fairly robust um, impact uh, on people's experience of, of well-being. Uh, now, um, one thing that I think of is fascinating about this is some of the research I've looked at has talked about how gratitude practice may not have its uh, big payoff in moment-to-moment uh, -moment experience of emotions. So when people are regularly practicing gratitude, uh, it may not make them... Um, overjoyed in the moment, but what it does is it impacts their effective state so that in the longer term, more broadly speaking, they're experiencing a greater sense of well-being. So gratitude is something that maybe isn't like exercise where you just finish a workout and you feel, oh, this is good. It may be something where you might you know, enjoy the gratitude, but its bigger impact is something that you experience down the road. So it will definitely require some patience. Now, what can a person do for practicing gratitude? There are lots of ways to do this. I, every year I have a few students who have a, a, a gratitude practice, and a lot of it centers around what's referred to as grateful recounting. Uh, with grateful recounting, what you do is you actually take the time to focus on things that you are grateful for. So it may be journaling at the end of the day and writing about five uh, moments that day uh, for which you're grateful. And what the person is doing in that moment is taking the time to experience the gratitude they had in the moment earlier in the day. Now here's where that's beneficial. If you recall what we did with uh, the name game um, a couple days ago, People got better at names the more we practice them. Because if you're trying new neural circuits, for those connections between the circuits to become enhanced or to become stronger, it needs repeated action. So taking the time to repeatedly put yourself back into the experience of gratitude is going to help strengthen the circuits that are firing when we experience gratitude. So our ability to sort of recognize opportunities for gratitude and experience that gratitude are enhanced with practice. Uh, another very common practice uh, is gratitude letters. So I was really fascinated by this. So the uh, experiment that I read about looked at some college students, excuse me, try to clear off the screen there, looked at some college students who were, I think, coming in for uh, counseling services at the university. One group was uh, told to spend 30 minutes uh, writing, just, you know, write whatever. And the other group spent 30 minutes uh, writing gratitude letters. They wrote a letter to someone uh, that did something for them or had an impact on their life, and they spent time thinking about what they were grateful for. So I think the setup was it was like once a week or once every other week for like three weeks. They had three sessions where they sat down and just dedicated 30 minutes to focusing on gratitude. And what they found is that even several weeks later, the people who were in the letter writing group had a higher 
subjective well-being score than people who were in the control group. So there was, again, a longer term impact on people's affect from having taken the time to practice gratitude. So this is actually something you guys are going to do uh, in class on Monday. On Monday, you're going to have your normal um, mindfulness practice. And then after that, we're going to have 30 minutes dedicated to writing gratitude letters. So it doesn't need to be, or it doesn't mean you need to spend 30 minutes writing one letter to one person. You can write multiple letters to multiple people. What matters though, is that you spend the time because again, the more time you spend, uh, the more opportunity you have for these circuits to make stronger connections. And that can have the payoff again in the longer term. So gratitude letters are a, a really uh, wonderful way to practice gratitude, and it's something we're going to do in class. Okay, so what goes on um, physiologically when people are practicing gratitude? Well, um, there are a couple of neurotransmitters and neuromodulators that we're going to be discussing here. The first is dopamine. Uh, if you recall, dopamine is a neurotransmitter involved in motivation and reward. So people can feel rewarded for experiencing gratitude. I don't know if you've ever expressed your gratitude to someone and it felt good to do that, uh, or it can be motivating. So for you to be willing to pick up a pen, for you to get out of bed in the morning, all that requires dopamine. So gratitude practices uh, promote the release of this dopamine. So this can be a motivating thing to do. Another great thing is the release of serotonin. Serotonin is that feel-good neurotransmitter. So uh, again, it causes feelings of physical and sort of a psychological well-being. So when people regularly practice gratitude, they're going to feel better. And the beautiful thing about this is uh, what we talked about with Hebb's Law and what we experienced the other day with practicing names. It's easier and easier to remember all those names the more you practice it, because when those neurons fire in those patterns in those circuits, it strengthens the connections of those circuits. So if you regularly practice gratitude, then over time, again, your affective state can be elevated by that. So um, just like anything else, it takes the practice, right? So that's why on Monday, we're going to be writing those gratitude letters. Uh, so in terms of the takeaway from this, Again, just like anything else, it's about action. It's about doing. If you focus on the experience of gratitude, you'll activate these circuits. When you activate these circuits, it will release neurotransmitters that are sort of associated with enhanced well-being. And if you do that regularly, then over time, you can create these circuits that allow us to more easily notice things that we're grateful for. And if you spend this time in gratitude, then that can have a, an overall impact, not only on your moment to moment emotions, but maybe even on your affective state. So thank you for taking the time to uh, go through this. Um, hope you have a great day.